Hello guys, we're Beth Gateway. We're gonna uh, tell about the risk assessment based on NIST framework. Next, uh, I'll introduce our team members. Uh, the first, Lucas Hanley, an information security officer, and Chris Prince, cyber threat analyst, and Rich Osu, behavior analyst, and Brian Fuller, the behavior analyst, and Hyung Chul Lim, it's me, a cyber threat intelligence analyst, and Michael Perna, Compliance Analyst, and Matthew Campbell, Information Security Officer, and Abloy Kapur, Compliance Analyst Junior. Next. The purpose of this presentation is that uh, we want to show the process involved with conducting risk assessment of information system and uh, organization. Also, the, through the risk assessment, uh, we want to provide the senior leader and executives with the uh, information needed to uh, determine uh, appropriate courses, courses of action in response to ident identify risks. Okay, next. So uh, some background about our, uh, our specific case study was that of uh, espionage in which a senior financial analyst was arrested uh, boarding a plane headed for Switzerland and this person was carrying a large amount of uh, sensitive data that was uh, considered mission critical to, uh, to the bank. Um, computers were searched in his home, obviously, and emails were found in which he offered to sell uh, secrets about, uh, about the bank's uh, new, extremely expensive e-trading platform. And, um, and it's also known that he had been complaining to both his neighbors and to his coworkers um, about the nature of his job and uh, that he was just generally dissatisfied with that. Um, we noticed some, some issues with the, the general network topology of, of GNB. Uh, if, if we're reading it correctly, uh, we believe that um, it seems that network traffic is only firewalled, or I'm sorry, it is not firewalled between legal, uh, legal and, or finance, uh, HR, security operations, and e-trading. Um, it seems to only be firewalled from e-trading to the internet, and uh, so not so sort of not in between business silos um, as we believe one would expect. And uh, we also believe that given that the e-trading platform is as critical and as expensive as it is, uh, it should have its own dedicated uh, intrusion detection uh, uh, servers. <clears throat> okay, so uh, important stakeholder needs. So the first thing is the bank employees. Uh, they need protection of clients' personal data and account information against the insider and outsider threats. The clients of the banks need uh, proper management and security of personal data, de like debit card information and uh, other banking and routing information. And then, then the uh, investors of the bank need uh, proper protocols that are followed to ensure that risks are, uh, aren't as severe. So best practices against insider threats. First, we must consider the, that there are threats from the insiders and business partners, and uh, we must develop formalized insider threat programs. We must use log correlation engine of security information and event management system, which is also abbreviated for SIEM, and it all starts with the hiring process, and then we have to monitor, respond to suspicious activities. I'll be speaking about my point of view as an information security officer. First of all, security is, for, is, is very important. And the first thing we should have done was identify what we needed to protect. We should have identified the main assets, which would be the files that were taken. And we should have made sure that we put measures in place, such as firewalls to keep people out to, in order to protect that asset. We also need to have things in place that could detect any anomalies, block people out, such as the firewalls and security systems for, for passwords. So as well as uh, um, to protect, as well as uh, to detect and identify, we also have to uh, respond. Um, and that involves, you know, respond planning, uh, communication, as well as uh, analysis as well, um, you know, and mitigation as well. So, and lastly, it's to recover. Um, so yeah, our recovery planning, um, how can you improve from uh, from the last time, um, and as well as communicating as well, um, that evolves in the recovery process. Uh, so hi, I'll be speaking about the risk assessment for um, our case study. 
and there's two categories. Um, there's the subcategory and the description. So the first one I'll be speaking about is threat event, which employees have some form of access to the system and usually try to hide their attack as a, no as a normal process. The second one is the threat sources, which is employees, ex-employees with their credentials active. Uh, the next one is intent, which is revenge, hatred for the company, and espionage from competitors. Uh, the next one is targeting, which is targets um, and critical information in the organization, and um, the risk, which is medium as a combination of likelihood and level of impact. Cool. Um, hi, my name is Chris Prince, and uh, I'm the cyber threat analyst for Bad Gateway. Um, the final product after following the NISD framework uh, resulted in creating a risk assessment chart. And on this chart, we summarize the various uh, risk areas, the specific threats related to the case, the team members responsible for dealing with these threats, uh, a qualitative rating, uh, the impact and likelihood rating of these threats, and a final risk rating. And along with this risk rating, we have also uh, implemented certain controls or risk mitigation processes that would help in uh, dealing with these threats. Thank you.